who should we give to? So the other day in the post, I received, um, I ordered some books and I, with it I received um, three um, information about three different charities in there, um, all asking for financial support. Um, they caught my eye. Two of them were charities that I was familiar with, Christian Aid and Tear Fund, and the third was a charity I'd never heard of um, called Toy Box, so I thought I'd read on. Um, the Tear Fund leaflet, it sh that shared the plight of uh, those in Yemen who have been affected by the atrocities of war and now COVID, um, could I give to help provide emergency relief kits, provide water cleaning kits and hygiene kits to help protect and prevent against COVID, or an emotional um, support package to help those affected by the conflict there. Christian Aid's uh, leaflet told the story of Rose, um, whose life has been affected by climate change. She's um, suffered from drought, hunger, um, and now they've got COVID. Um, you're given a personal story here, so you can relate to it more, and uh, it might encourage you to give. Um, so you would be giving to their communities to help her access clean water, um, safe drinking water, and to give a reliable long-term source of water for them to help um, keep them safe and help their livelihoods. And the third booklet was the one um, from Toy Box, um, which was a plea I'd never actually come across before. Um, they were asking for £32 to register a child in Guatemala. Um, apparently, um, as I found out from reading, there are lots of street children in Guatemala um, and some many very, very poor families um, who can't afford to actually um, something as simple as provide, get a birth certificate for their children. Um, so without a birth certificate, these children are then stripped of their identity. It means they can't access education, they can't access health care, and then they can't access a job. So they're kind of stuck in this vicious cycle of poverty, not being able to do anything. Um, so without this bit of paper, um, yeah, their their life is um, very difficult. Um, but the charity, um, basically, th that cost for £32 covers the cost for the certificates. Apparently, you have to pay a fine if you don't register it at birth. So that ups the cost even more. You then have to pay, you know, uh, for their babies that... We um, uh, for midwife costs, you have to pay for witnesses for the the certificate um, and lots of other things. So, um, but just that thirty two pound, can you imagine, could actually change that person's life just by a birth certificate. Um, so, yeah, as you can imagine, they're all three worthy causes, um, and just three of like hundreds and thousands that we might see, um, you know, every day that drop through our door or we see on TV or when we're out and about um, situations that affect people, places, wildlife, lots of things and situations in need. Um, so how do we choose who's worthy of our money? Does God guide us? Or maybe we're drawn to ones that are closer to our own interests. And should we help those whose situations are more urgent or should we concentrate on those abroad or at home? Should we help, you know, the hungry, helpless and poor here or those abroad? Or should we focus on, you know, charities that do um, things for longer term investments rather than the here and now? It's, you know, it's almost a minefield. You don't know where to start and where to decide. Um, do you know, after reading them all, I wanted to help all three of those scenarios. But, you know, I can't. Um, I can't, you know, afford financially to do that. So I asked God, you know, how do I decide? Um, and I sought help and look through the words of the Bible. Um, the second commandment tells us to love our neighbour. And in all these situations, by helping them, we would be loving our neighbour. In Luke 6.38, it says, give and it will be given unto you. And then in Acts 20.35, we're taught it is more blessed to give than to receive. And there are plenty of other examples in the Bible where we're taught to give to others, but how to choose between them, um, <coughs> excuse me, and who may be deemed as the most worthy to receive is not always easy or clear. I believe that if we are able to give, however small, like the parable of the old lady with the two coins, um, the act of giving with all your heart, that's what matters. That's what truly matters, not how much we are give. It's up to us to actually decide which charities and causes that we feel are most deserving. 
Of course, we'll all have our favourites, but sometimes it can be good to give to new ones too. So when booklets like this arrive on your doorstep or you see these adverts on the TV, rather than ignore them um, as you feel you can't give to everyone, maybe next time just read them. Listen to the needs that are on there. And even if you can't give the money, um, you can give. You can give your love and you can give through your prayer, the prayer for the situations. So sometimes I think we're guided by God to give. Otherwise, I do think it's part of our Christian nature. Um, and many of us will give naturally without a second thought. So we may not be able to help all those in need, but we can certainly do what we can, whether it's at home, on our doorstep, in our community or abroad. Let us pray. Lord, we bring before you all those in need and as your disciples, guide us to help them in whatever way we can. And if we can't help them in person or in financially, then help us to bring them and the situation before you so that you may remember them and help them. Amen. <laughs>